Thank you for joining this demonstration. I'd like to take a few moments to walk you through the GeoDiscover version for ClickView. What you've got here on the screen is a typical ClickView dashboard flowing from multiple data sets, but it also has the GeoDiscover object embedded in the center of the dashboard, the mapping area. This area is totally connected to Esri ArcGIS server. It can connect to ArcGIS online or Esri's portal, doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're using the GeoDiscover utility to talk to Esri, to map services, bring those in, synchronize and, and communicate with the ClickView side of the dashboard and give you a seamless bi-directional interaction. Let's walk around the functionality in the map area. What we've got here, we have, uh, we're pulling in a map service, which is bringing in uh, some locations. This is some oil and gas data, but it could be retail, it could be utilities, it could be government. But we're looking at some locations around the state of Texas. What we're looking at are points and polygons, in this case, locations and counties. What the tool allows you to do is interact with this, this information. It may be as simple as, I want a different base map. You simply go to the drop down for base maps and change from the light gray canvas that we started with to street maps. So by changing the street maps, we're done. But we've included about 12 different base maps. Your organization may have something that you use as a base map already. Perhaps it's uh, sales territories or uh, certain geographical areas of the country. Through configuration, you can simply add that URL for that base map, and that becomes selectable as well. So you have our uh, default base map, and you can add your own. You also have the ability to turn on and turn off layers. These layers are coming from the Azure Map Services. You can have as many layers as you wish. I'll turn on uh, Storm System. Where we've turned that on, it now has, we have full functionality to interact with it, to see what's underneath it, to uh, analyze it. You can turn off certain layers. It's as easy as that. I'll turn off the Storm layers for now. We also have a piece of functionality we call a PIN. A PIN allows you to set up a market research area. So if I want to drop a PIN on the map, I simply select this tool and I click the map. And it now says, all right, you want to do an analysis. Do you want to do an analysis based on miles or based on minutes? We can do a drive time analysis based on this location. We'll just do a quick 10 minute or 10 mile uh, analysis. So it's created that polygon. We'll turn off this and we'll minimize this. Now we can use this new layer essentially to do research. Perhaps this is a, a location where we're thinking of putting in a new clinic. From that point, we can now look out at a radius of 10 miles and study every patient underneath there or study every competitor or study the number of households, anything that's underneath that new study area. To turn off the pin, you simply clear the pin. All right, let's back up so we get some more points to interact with. We also have included selection tools so you can interact with the map. So uh, you simply pick the layer that you wish to interact with. I'm going to stay on these locations, the wells, all of my point layers appear here. And I can use rectangular selection tools. I can use polygons. I can use a free form. And I can use circles. Circle is very similar to what we had in the pin. Well, let's take a rectangular tool and let's just highlight an area. And we're now interacting. Tool, the GeoDiscover tool has gone back to Esri and said, hey, given this area, tell me every point that's underneath. And so for the first time, we're seeing interaction with the click view side, down here in the lower left-hand side. Underneath this yellow rectangular area, these are all the location IDs that are under that layer. Here, we have all of the counties 
which are included in those points. So you're starting to see the bidirectionality between interact with Esri, click view updates. We can also interact with click view and the map update. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, let's turn off the selection layer and let's look at heat maps. We still have these points selected; they're green. But if we look at heat maps, we can select any point layer on which to apply a heat map, because heat maps only work with point layers, and uh, we get this heat map. Heat maps, by definition, uh, originally were based on the quantity of points and the distance between the points. That's what creates this yellow, yellow, red, blue uh, gradient. So something we've added to the technology is allowing you to send a seed to that calculation. Perhaps you don't want it just based on the distance between points. You want it based on sales volume or number of patients or number of competitors. So we allow you by configuration to say in my heat map calculation, send uh, the depth, in this case, the depth of these wells and use that for my heat map calculation. Uh, we simply turn off the heat map by apply our color values. That, that brings up a good point. Let's talk about color values for a second. You notice that our points are yellow and red predominantly. Where those colors are coming from is a click chart. Your developers do not have to be Esri experts. This is a click view dashboard. They're click developers. They understand how to designate colors through an expression in the click table. So inside of this table, we're saying based on certain values, you turn it yellow or you turn it red, and that is transmitted into the map. But I don't want to see my points based on depth, the yellow and red. I want to see it based on volume, the green and blue. Simply tell it which, uh, which column to use. And the color values are transmitted into the map. Now, you'll notice something else here. We have some small points and we have some large points. We allow you to have uh, to grow and shrink the values for the points, it, just like you're accustomed to in, a, in an old fashioned click view map. So you can set coloring, you can set size. The same thing applies to the counties or any polygon area. You can set the color in click view. You then tell the map which column do I want to use for my coloration. And you simply select that column and it uh, updates. All right, let's bring it back to the, the whole product, the whole state. And let's look at navigation. We can zoom in, we can zoom out. You can go back to your home location, uses the lat long of your computer and centers the map. But something we've talked about before was green, white, and gray. You notice we have green and white selected for visualization on the map. I'm going to clear these points so we can get every point. There we go. I'm going to turn them yellow, yellow and red, just a little more visible. But now I want to turn on the gray. You're all familiar with click view. The gray is in play, but we're not visualizing it. But if I turn on the gray by simply checking that box, suddenly I get every county that is gray. It doesn't have any locations in that county. But I also get all the points around the country that were not being visualized. I had it filtered on the state of Texas. So you can turn on and turn off green, whites, and grays just at the click of a mouse. All right, let's look at another feature. Let's look at printing. Something that's very difficult to do in ClickView is get a print of a PDF of a map or any extension object. But with this, let's, let's change our base map just so it's a little more colorful. And uh, now let's print it. By printing this, we give it a name. We'll just call it demo. And we print it. A process is being run, which is taking the what's inside of the mapping area and bringing that back to you in a PDF format. 
Let's view it. Let's open this with our Adobe Reader. And there is the contents of the map. So finally, you can get a, a printout of in, the inside of an extension object. All right, let's zoom in and I want to show you pop ups. We allow you through configuration, there's no programming on your part, it's all configuration to have pop ups. So I just touched this location and the information that's inside of the pop up, you define that. And that can be coming from Esri or it can be coming from your ClickView site. Most of what you see here is simply being pushed in from the charts and tables around the dashboard. Here's something new. This is called TriView. I'm going to click this icon for TriView and it's going to open a new window. And this is our point from three new perspectives. I get the street map view. I get street view so i can turn around and look now these locations are out in the country there's the the oil well right there but i also have a satellite imagery and uh satellite imagery is available for the entire country but if your point is in a city where there are multiple satellite images you can rotate around that and look at your location from 360 degree view so this is all synchronized to my map. All right, so let's review. You have a standard ClickView dashboard. Your developers are accustomed to creating those. We allow you through configuration to touch Esri and bring in map services, any number of map services. We allow you to create your coloring from inside the click tables that is sent into the map. We allow you to print the map. We allow you to change base maps, to have any number of layers you wish, to do selections in the map. So what we have here is a fully functional Esri to ClipView integration that you can have in your dashboards. You can have as many tabs as you wish and have a map on each tab. They're not limited. So thank you for joining this demonstration. If you have more questions, please visit our website at us-geomarket.com. We would love to visit with you. Thank you very much.